Crack. What's going on, everybody? My name is A.T., and I'm from Head Crack Studios. And today, we're going to go over creating a blank recording session in Pro Tools 10. So with that being said, let's get started. Right when you click the app, when you click it, it's going to load up. Then it's going to bring you to the Quick Start menu. What I'm going to do for today's tutorial is just cancel it. That way you guys can see actually how to get the parameters you want and create a blank one. So you just want to go to File, New Session, and up pops this menu. So you just go to Create Blank Session, keep the audio file to WAVE, and this is your bit depth and then your sample rate. This basically is audio digital conversion settings. What I usually keep it at is 2448, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. Some people use 16441. And some people even go way higher, uh, you know, up the chain if they're able to do it. I keep it at 24, 48 for the sake of what I use. So let's just press OK. Then it's going to tell you where you want to save it to. For the tutorial, I'm going to save it to the desktop. I usually save it to a dedicated hard drive that spins a lot faster than my computer's hard drive. But for today, I'm just going to go to desktop. Let's just go to name this recording. And you see how Pro Tools makes a folder for you with everything in it. So now here's your edit window. So what I usually do is, I usually just get started. I just drag the beat on in. That way let Pro Tools load the beat. And while the beat is loading, as you can see, I got a lot of, um. this is called the edit window for those who don't know. And then you have the mix window right behind it. And I have a lot of components that are in the mix window. I have it in the edit window because just workflow purposes. I like to get, you know, when I'm in the mix of things, I like to be able to move quick without having to move to different screens. Most people have, some people have two screens, but right now I'm working on one. So I just like to keep everything here. I have my, you know, the name, the track, the inserts, the inserts again, the sends and the comments. This is your I.O. I.O. stands for in and out. So here's your in, here's your out. The out is coming through the main speakers. This is the tracks that are in the session. You can see this is the only track that's in the session. Groups, we'll get into that later when we're going into mixing. And clips, as you can see, the beat is in there as well. But the difference between tracks and clips is tracks are basically this what you see, the blue. I can actually change color to this, so let's just make it something different, something green. And clips is every clip, every audio, piece of audio that's been recorded or dragged in. You'll see the difference when you're recording because you could be recording. Actually, I'll, I'll figure, I'll show you that down the road. Let's just get started. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so this is the transport, play. I have this set on punch, just normal, just, just your record button. This is your cursor to minutes and seconds. I usually have it on bars and beats. We'll change it in a minute. And these are all your navigational tools. This is your trim tool. This is your selector tool. It's your grabber tool, and if you click up top, the little bar up top, it selects all three. That way I could go to a certain space, it'll grab, select, and then trim. And this is how your session is set up. So you either have grid, you usually want to stay between grid and slip. I have it on grid for a reason, I'll show you why. So this is how I usually get set up, have the beat in. So what I would do is I'll zoom in, you can either zoom in this way, or you could use R and T. T is the one that zooms in, and R is the one that zooms out. On the keyboard so what I do is I press tab and what that is is tab the transients right here you want to have that highlighted so what tab the transient does is it does what his name implies it tabs to the transient so you can see nothing's here actually let me turn this beat down sorry this is my volume knob too so I see nothing's here but if I tab it'll tab right to where the beat begins so in doing so, I'm already at the transient. I'm going to press Command E. What that does is it cuts at the transient. So let me zoom in a little bit more. And so, right where that second snare hit, that's the end of the first bar. So I want to tab the transient right where the second bar begins. And Command E again. So, what that does is it should give us a perfect loop. All right, sounds good. The reason why I'm doing that is so I can press Command I. So right where the starting location is, where I, you know, the beginning of the loop where I cut first, you want to press one. The ending, you want to press two. So what that usually means is it's starting at the beginning of bar one and it's ending at the beginning of bar two. You press OK, it gives you the BPM. Pro Tools tracks the BPM according to the bar that you gave it. 
So now it's giving me 87.5. So what I would do is I'll go ahead and go to Window, go to Transport, and I'll click this little Composer guy because that's the global settings, but I want to change it manually. So what I'll do is I'll go down, and I'll just round up to 88. And it went to 89 because of my mouse. Let's just drag it down. Bang, 88. So the reason why I do that is because you never know what's going to happen in a recording session. You could be asked to loop a certain section, and you'll see once I add some tracks that the grid, if you have the grid set, so here's grid, and you have it set to bars and beats, it'll actually have the transients right there marked for you. And when you have the Pro Tools set to grid, everything will just snap easily. And it's all following the BPM, so it should be all aligned with the transients. You see, a little off, but then again, you could work around it and kind of fine-tune it. I just did it quick. So with that being said, now we got a BPM and we got a beat. Actually, the BPM comes in handy, too, when mixing, when you want to match delays and reverb to the to the tempo of the song, but that's for later down the road. So now, let's create new audio tracks. I'm going to use the shortcut called Command-Shift-N, and that brings up the new tracks window, or you can go to Track, New. And when you do that, comes up this window. So you have one row, and this is usually what I use for my recording tracks, and I keep my audio tracks on mono for the sake of recording. So then you want to add a row if you want a different kind of track. If you don't, if you're just going to do all audio tracks, you can just specify how many you want. You know, you could go from five to however many you want. For the sake of the record of this tutorial today, I'm just going to do five. And then I made a new row on purpose, and I'm going to change it to stereo and have it at a master fader. If you don't have a piece of hardware that shows you like a master fader, Basically, what a master fader is, is just the master volume of the whole session of everything that's going on. If you don't have an interface that does that, then you might, then you're definitely going to want to make a stereo master fader track. Press create. And there you go. Here's your master fader and here's your audio tracks. So now, and now as you can see, the window open, you can see the grid. It matches to the transients that we did. So now if you ever have to go in and, you know, copy and paste the hook or something, it'll be fairly easy to do when you have the grid up. So now... I'm going to take Audio 1, double-click where it says Audio 1, change this to Recording, because what I like to do is just record on one track. And double-click where it's blue, little section right here, where the drop-down menu is, and I just double-click it and change the color. So, yeah, what I was saying is I usually like to record on one track and then drag everything down. That way, you know, you don't get caught up in changing the tracks and everything. So, now that it's ready to record you just want to go to your IO and you want to make sure that your N is whatever N you're using that your mic is connected to whatever interface you have you want to make sure that you have it in I'm using the Universal Audio Apollo so my N is mic line you know one so then with that that's the way you record and the way you will record is just you press your arm to track the record then you go up top and you'll press the little record enable button and what that'll do is allow you to record now it's not recording anything because my mic line one is actually in my ISO booth so nobody's in there to record but you know if you have somebody in the booth or you have if you're using the mic line one it will record you and that's about it for recording so now let's just go to your audio tracks and um, all right you know what let's do this let's record something real quick quick piece of audio so what I usually do is record a piece of audio and then I will hold control and what control does is it doesn't allow you to go side to side it only allows you to go up and down so you keep the audio in place and that's what I would usually do is I was um, drag the audio down that way now say this is a piece of audio now you're able to record on top of it so say somebody wanted to punch in as so and you can also press three if you have the extended keyboard the Mac keyboard the three all the way to the right the number pad, that's the one you'll use to record. You know, so that'll be actually, you know, work as a punch, a makeshift punch, punch in right now, overdub. And there you go. So you just keep dragging this so. And um, yeah, that's usually what I do. And then make sure they can hear the beat. This is your volume knob. And that's about it. That's usually what I do to record. And then now it's just going, all right, let's go through setup real quick. Sorry about that. You want to go to playback engine. 
with a setup playback engine. And I have this high because I'm usually mixing, but for recording purposes, you want to actually go to a low buffer size. And this is just your processor. Some computers have 2, 4, 6, 16, 8. Mine, mine has 8. You know, your CPU uh, usage limit, I use that at 85. Delay compensation is when you're... It's usually for mixing. I keep it on just because, but if it gives me problems, I'll turn it off. But that's mainly when you're using big uh, plugins and it bogs down the CPU. But for now, you really want to go at a lower sample rate when recording. Buffer size. Sorry about that. Buffer size. So then, you know, set up. Make sure your hardware... You have your hardware set up. Make sure your IOs are in order. And if you're not seeing the IO that you want, the end, what you want to do is just go to where I just went to, setup, IO, setup, press default. And what default will do to your ins and outs, it'll actually default and bring up the interface's ins and outs. So that way it recognizes what you need. And that's about it. I know I kind of jumped back and forth, but in the long run, this is all you really need to know about recording. And then just get started. Spacebar, you know, you press, you press the rec arm it, record enable, spacebar, there you go. And that's about it, guys. As you can see, we have tracks. And as you can see, here's the clips. So now look, if I delete these, they still remain. So if I wanted to bring them back in, I might have to time them out a little bit, but they're still there. And this is what I was saying earlier about the tracks. See how these are the audio tracks that are in the session but i can record multiple times on the recording track and it'll stay there recording one through five you know if i keep going and now you have six you get what i mean but it's still on the recording track so you know that's just a little housekeeping and that's about it guys you know if you guys have any questions feel free to comment below i know there's some things i might have missed so please Please comment, you know, first tutorial, getting the bugs out. I appreciate you guys watching. Please like, comment, and share, and subscribe to my channel. And like I said, if you have any comments or concerns or questions, feel free to ask. You can email me at um, headcrackstudios at gmail.com, or you can just comment below, and I'll, be try I'll try my best to get back to you. Thanks again, guys. This is AT from Headcrack Studios.